Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we're going to talk about conditional formatting in Excel. It'll be a little bit longer video than usual because there's a lot to cover. So let's get started. The first thing is you find the conditional formatting button on the home tab about the middle of that ribbon. So when you click on that, you have several different options there right under the button there. And the first one I want to talk about here is the highlight cell rules. So examples of the highlighting cells are that or cells that are greater than a particular value are between two values, contain a specific text string, uh, contain a date, or are even duplicated. Those are highlighted based on the rules on the right hand side. The next level is the top bottom rules. Now these top bottom rules are examples of like highlighting the top 10 items, the items in the bottom 20% or items, for example, that are above average. Uh, a lot of different items there. Now you've got data bars also. Data bars put information in the cell itself. Now you can specify whether or not you want the data value to show along with the bar or not. So you can have just the bar in the cell or you can have the bar along with the data. And I'll show you examples of both here shortly. It has either a gradient fill or a solid fill that allows you to represent the length or the value of that cell related to the largest or smallest cell within the range of data that you're highlighting. The next one is color scales. Now the color scales allow you to highlight a red or green or yellow type of schema, kind of a stoplight schema if you want, or any colors you choose within the particular cells that you're working on. It's similar to data bars in the respect that the cell is colored, but the data bars show length where the color scales show the scale of color and it highlights the entire cell. The next one is icon sets. And let's make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, icon sets you can choose here range from three icons to five icons and allow you to set formula ranges on your things like the top 10% would be rated with a, an icon that's green where the bottom 10% might be an icon that's red and everything in the middle is yellow or type that type of thing. And here's an example, you can see that there are are four arrows that are colored and it says choose the icon set that represents the values of the data. So in this case, you're selecting all four of them. You're setting, selecting, so that why they call it icon sets. You select a particular set of icons and they're all banded together like that. This, these top two are formula based rules. The next bunch are based on just the value in the cell itself related to the entire highlighted area. When you start building the highlighting, we can set up a new rule and start from scratch. You can clear all the rules if you want to and start all over. And this dialog box allows you to manage the particular rule. So you can get into a particular rule and tweak it and edit it a little bit. Uh, you can delete specific rules and rebuild them totally from scratch, however you want to do it. That dialog box allows you to manage everything. So the next, let's look at a few examples. Um, start with data bars. Now this is a data bars of Bob Dylan music. It's got the, the album and the title of the song, and it tells the relative length of the song based on the longest song in the list. The next one is a chart that's laid out a lot like a chart, but this is not a chart actually. It's individual cells that are highlighted with data bars. They've chosen not to show the value in the data bars, but they've showed, chosen to have the data bar values next to it to the left. So it looks nice and clean this way. And you can see that the incoming calls are bigger in December. This must be a, a retail sales outlet. And the way you set these up is here in this dialog box where you format cells based on their values. That's the top type of rule that it is. And here the format style is data bar and the minimum, uh, in this case, it's a number set to zero. And we've decided that we just want the highest value to be the top of the scale there. We can set the color of the bars and we see a preview at the bottom. So let's look at color scales. Now here's, here's an example of how a color scale is used. 
you can see that in the Western and Central and Eastern, they're compared amongst themselves. If you compared the regions to each other, in other words, highlighted the entire band, you would get Central being all red and uh, Western or Eastern being all green. So that wouldn't be very effective. But Western is compared among all Western sales. And you can see that their best month is in November and their worst month is in January. And it's kind of different for each of the others. And you can get a quick picture of where your particular regions, in this case, have their high sales or their low sales in which particular month. So that's that's good, solid information. The next thing is a staffing level chart. You can see that in January, their staffing is low. And then you go down to December and their staffing is ramped up, obviously, for, for the Christmas season. Starts in sometime in October and November. It starts ramping up to get over 100 in December. So daily staffing level, pretty, uh, pretty good chart for getting a good picture of when you have higher staffing versus lower staffing. And so these are, are set by looking at the this dialog box. And so this dialog box says that it's gonna be a three color scale. And then you have the three minimum midpoint and maximum that you could set up uh, individually. And here they've chosen red for minimum, yellow for the midpoint and green for the maximum. And then gives you a preview of how that scale is going to morph from red to yellow to green. So let's look at the icon sets for a second. Now the icon sets, in this example, the project status report is if they're done, they get a green check. If they're not even started, they're at zero, they get a, a red X. And then the everything in between gets an exclamation point. So they cho chose three and decided to have that middle one be started but not complete. The other option here is just a two level icon chart where they get a green check marked for done and red uh, X if they're not done and just leave the others blank. Uh, either chart gives you kind of effective. The one on the right is uh, kind of an effective look at the data. The one on the right is a little cleaner, in my opinion. Then you have this three-level chart using the arrows, with the midpoint arrow being yellow and turning, pointing to the right, where the green arrow points up and the red arrow points down. And you set these up simply by choosing your icon set. The format style is icon set, and then you get to choose your s sets of icons there. And then you'll be given the ranges down below where you can tell, in, in this case, it's anything above five. Uh, five or above is gonna be a green arrow. Between negative five and five is gonna be uh, a yellow arrow, and the red arrow is anything below negative five. So you can tell that you can set those ranges to indicate what you need based on a very flexible system there. So the next thing, let's look, let's look at the formula-based conditional formatting. In this example, let's, I'm going to take a spreadsheet that we use frequently here when we're developing videos. And you can see in January, we plan on building a, a couple shorts at the beginning of January. You know, when people are still out partying, we'll throw a couple shorts out there. Uh, then we'll start in, the, in on the videos and throw a short in the middle of the month and so forth. Now, what I want to do is I want to highlight Monday because Monday is a day that we always deploy a video. So what I want to do is highlight all the Mondays. So I start by highlighting all of my band of dates there. Then I go to creating a new rule. And then when I create the new rule, it, it opens this dialog box. Now, I'm not going to format all cells based on their values. What I'm going to do is come down and choose use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now I'm going to input a, a formula there and I'm just going to say weekday A141, which is the top of my band, equals two. Now weekday value of two is Monday because Sunday is one, Monday is two, when Tuesday is three and so forth. So the next thing I do is go, I click the format button. And when I click that format button, I'm presented with a dialog box where I can choose the color that I want highlighted if the value does equal Monday. So I've got green set here. And when I click OK there, it comes back to here, gives me a preview. It's going to be green if the formula is true. When I click OK, it comes down here. And here's where you can see that it applies to 141 to 149. You can see that it's green. And the formula it shows on the left-hand side equals the formula that I, that I input into the system. So when I actually click OK down here to 
uh, then apply it, I can see that all my Mondays are highlighted. So I can readily see which videos I've deployed on Monday. So hopefully you've gained some good information out of this video. And if you do, please click that like button. Let's get it out to other people. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can subscribe. And we've got over 300 videos for you to peruse and work through. Good information on Word, Excel, and Microsoft Access. So hope to see you again sometime. Thanks.